success of the Mars Pathfinder mission last summer and John Glenn's return to space have heightened public interest in the U.S. space program. Joining me now to talk about John Glenn's mission as well as some of the challenges facing NASA is the Space Agency's Administrator, Daniel Golden. Mr. Golden, uh, welcome to Late Edition. Great to be here, Wolf. So far, is everything going according to plan? Any snags at all? We're ahead of schedule. We've had a few problems. As you know, on launch, uh, we lost the door covering the parachute. We had a few little problems on orbit, but they're minor. And this is what the space frontier is about, surprise and being able to react to it. All right, I want to give you a chance to respond to some of the critics. Everyone is obviously very excited about this mission, but there are critics who are trying to rein a little bit in, uh, on NASA's parade right now. Let me read to you what Chuck Yeager, the first man to break the uh, sound barrier, what he told the San Antonio Express News this week. He said, quote, it's a payoff to John Glenn for his support of Clinton and also the NASA budget. NASA needs the publicity, and they couldn't have picked a better guy to hype the space program. We're about science and opening the space frontier. To make sure this wasn't political, when John Glenn first approached me, I asked my staff to call the White House and ask that this decision be mine. I had no discussions with the president, vice president, or staff of the White House. This is not NASA's program. It's America's program. And it's peer-reviewed good meritorious science the scientific community supports it most of science was selected before we selected john glenn and those critics uh, including the wall street journal and others uh, rush limbaugh who say this is a payback to john glenn for support of president clinton during the campaign fundraising investigation in the face of challenges from the chairman senator uh, fred thompson i stand behind what i said the space program belongs to america not to democrats or republicans this is our program and I will do whatever it takes to make sure it's not in the realm of the pol pol political aspect. All right, when you were right after the, the launch uh, of uh, this, this latest mission, you spoke very glowingly of President Clinton and his role in getting this going. Let's listen to specifically what you said. I want to introduce to you a man who cares about America's space program, who cares about America's future. And when we had those battles up in Washington, he made sure we're going to build a space station. Some thought you were being a little bit too uh, uh, effusive in your praise for the president only days before this election. The president is the president of the United States. It's the first time a president came down to Cape Kennedy to see a launch. He stood behind us. We almost lost the space station, and I felt it was very appropriate to talk about the president. There have been other leaders of the country down at the Cape, and when they supported the program, I've been just effusive about them. Okay, what's next on the agenda after this mission comes back safely? What's your top priority after that? Getting the International Space Station built. If it's safe to launch on November 20th, we launch the first element from Baikonur in Kazakhstan. Then December 3rd from Cape Kennedy. April from Cape Kennedy. And then next summer from Baikonur again. And then 45 launches over five years from four, t four different launch sites around the world. You know, a lot of people are afraid that the Russians, who are supposed to help uh, pay for some of this, simply are not going to have the money. They're having troubles, uh, as you know, making ends meet. Who's going to pay for all of this if the Russians can't come up with the cash? The Russians don't have the money. We're doing two things. First, in case they cannot perform, we're building some equipment in the United States to keep the space station up and running. Secondly, we're working with the Russians. You know, during the Cold War, we spent five trillion dollars to win the peace. We are now talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. We're on the two-yard line ready to go in for a touchdown. We'll work with them and buy specific goods and services so that we could get on with this program. They've, you know, I was going to just say, they've had so many problems, though, with their own MIR program. How do you know that, you, that there's enough confidence in their capabilities to deal in this kind of very, very important matter that could endanger U.S. lives if, in fact, they make a mistake? Safety is the number one thing we do, but the space frontier is unforgiving and we have problems. Quite to the contrary, Mir has been up there 12 years without loss of life. It is the longest flying uh, vessel in the history of the world. When you uh, get involved in space, billions of people come into your laboratory, so you see the problems. But the fact of the matter is, Mir has been a very safe laboratory, and we learn from Mir, and as a result, the space station will be safer. You know, some other critics say that what you should re really be doing is what you did with Mars, unmanned missions, a lot cheaper, a lot less risky to human life, obviously. 
why not uh, pursue the unmanned aspect like the Mars Pathfinder as opposed to uh, this International Space Station, which is going to be so much more expensive? Because life is about doing the right thing. America goes, does take risk when it's important, when there's a payoff. When it's appropriate to send unrobotic probes, we send them. But ultimately, there will come a day when we're ready to send people to Mars, and we will. This is a nation of explorers. We're not afraid of going to the frontier. And when the rewards outweigh the risk, by God, we're going to do go there. And I might point out, in our laboratories, I've yet to see robot, robots do the work of scientists, the dexterity, the adaptability, and the inspiration in human experience. It's part of life. This, this sending John Glenn back up into space, how important was that for the morale of your agency and for all those involved in the space program? It's another event. I'm thrilled that uh, John Glenn is going back to space, but it's another event. It's symbolic. The space program opened up with John Glenn and Alan Shepard flying. Phase one is closing this week with the flight of John Glenn. Phase two opens up November 20th with the International Space Station. We're going to have more launches in the next few years than we've had in the prior decade. We're launching an interplanetary spacecraft every 11 weeks. Ten years ago, we only launched one every five years. So there's going to be an increased vitality to the program, and Americans have a lot to be proud about. Okay, Daniel Golden, I'm sure you'll be watching every minute of this mission as it unfolds in the next few days. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you.